I'm going to call to order the Board of Public Works meeting for April 3rd, 2023, held in the Francis Huntley Cooper Council Chambers. Do we have any um, appearances on, for non-agenda items? Um, number three, approval of minutes. Can I get a motion to approve March 20th, 2023 meeting minutes? So moved. Will we approve the minutes of March 20th, 2023? Second. Okay, approved by Wilburn, seconded by Gernetsky. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. I guess I should go back and let everybody know who's here. Wilburn, Ganetsky, Lobdell, and myself are in council chambers, and we have Dave Herps and on Zoom. Item number four, report from the department. Tim Volker. For the record, Tim Volker, Director of Public Works, City Engineer. I'll start with staffing updates. Uh, we currently have three openings, uh, transportation engineer, the utilities engineer, and the part-time environmental engineer. Uh, that was Ryan's position. Uh, his last day was Friday, and uh, his position was posted last week. And then the utilities engineer position uh, closed last week. However, we received no applicants, so we'll be reposting that um, as soon as possible. Uh, next up is some project updates. The Phase 1 Syene Road reconstruction project. Today, uh, the intersection of Syene Road and Lacey Road was shut, shut down. Uh, we anticipate uh, late May that that intersection will be reopened. And then the Syene and East Cheryl Parkway intersection will be closed down uh, for construction work. And then Lacey Road Seminole Highway reconstruction project. Next week, Wednesday, the surveyor will be out there to stake the tree clearing limits. Uh, they're anticipating to complete their work by next week, Friday. And then Monday, April 17th, the tree uh, contractor that's been hired by the city to clear the trees will hopefully be on site. And then lastly, the Fitch Rona a uh, road reconstruction project that goes from Tonto Trail north to Nesbitt. There was a kickoff meeting held on uh, March 20th, 2023. Uh, last week, residents were mailed notices that um, some surveying work will be ongoing. They'll see that activity out there and that also some utility markings. They'll see the, the spray paint on the, the roadway. Um, you know, design is scheduled for 2023 and 2024 for that project and then construction 2025. So with that, does anyone have any questions? For the Lacey Road section, is there any way to get some signage up pre that? Because I know that that shoulder is non-existent currently. So if there's gonna be trucks, a lot of times when we see uh, work on the side of the road, trucks are really hugging the road. And so if that's gonna be there, a lot of people speed through that zone still. Are you, you talking the uh, Lacey and, and Syene intersection or uh, the, sorry, the work? Sorry. The, yeah, the Lacey a, oh. and uh, Lacey West. And, and Seminole? Yeah. So for the tree clearing project, you're, you're looking yeah. for some MOT work? Something like that, okay. yeah. Okay, all right. If we have a sign laying around that we can put on up. Yeah. Tim, uh, did we did we have any damage to any of our stormwater facilities or streets with the with the storm uh, on Friday? Uh, we did not. But good. Right. good to hear. Any other questions for Tim? Okay, moving on to agenda item five A. Could I get a motion approved resolution R dash seven four dash two three? Acceptance of Lacey Road and Seminole Highway intersection and Lacey Road reconstruction bids. So moved. Second. Moved by Garnetsky, seconded by Herps. Tim, you want to explain this one? Yes, so this is to you award the construction contract to Parisi Construction um, in the amount of $8,525,821.42. Uh, this includes a 5% contingency. 
Uh, the work that's going to be done is construction of the roundabout at the intersection of Seminole Highway and uh, Lacey Road, and then from Fitchrona Road east to Seminole Highway. So it's both the roundabout and the, the west portion of, of Lacey Road uh, reconstruction of that. Any questions? Is this all encompassing of the regrading, uh, any retaining walls that need to happen, any tree planting, or is this just the road component? It's all encompassing, I, but I believe that the trees were excluded. Um, okay. So some of the trees we'll be purchasing separately. Uh, we'll be working with Anna, An Anna, Anna, Anna. Uh, our Anna, <laughs> Anna. <laughs> Still getting to know names here. <laughs> um, on those, the tree selection. So. Very good. <laughs> Dave, you had a question. Yeah, I, I did. Um, you know, the eight million is kind of what we we had in the budget, but the the um, how much is the the grubbing of the trees and and that um, that scope of the work? Do you, what was the total value on that? Yeah, so the tree clearing that's going to be starting on the week of April 17th, hopefully, uh, that contract, I believe, was for $90,000. And the, the city actually had a purchase order to do that work back in 2022. However, it, we were still waiting on some land purchases to start that work. So we finally uh, cut the checks last week and uh, delivered that to the property owners. So now we're, we're looking to proceed with, with the original contract. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Okay, motion passes. Agenda item 5-B. Could I get a motion approving resolution? You vote. Oh, all in favor of the previous <laughs> resolution? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> Item 5B, can I get a motion? Approving resolution R-75-23, approving contract with FGM Architects for the architectural engineering services for the police services facility. So moved. Get a second. I'll second. Moved by Lobdell, seconded by Wilbur. Tim? Or? We have a special guest, a familiar face, to um, give the agenda item description for this one. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Uh, Paul, Paul Woodard, senior engineer. You haven't sat here in a while. Um, this resolution is to award the contract to FGM Architects in the amount of $1,748,500. City followed the normal process for this, we sent an RFP request for proposals. Uh, we received four proposals. They were reviewed by an internal team of representatives from the police department and public works department, and along with Fitchburg Center, because they'll be involved in the project in terms of the out outward design of the building, because the project lies within the Fitchburg Research Park. And from the review of those four proposals, we selected FGM architects, um, and the proposal is included in your packet. And this is for the, the design services necessary for the construction of the police services facility that's on the west side, proposed on the west side of Research Park Drive. Any questions? Dave. Uh, Paul, have you, have you worked with them before or have they done similar, uh, similar projects? And, and second, good to see you. Thanks. <laughs> it's good to see you too, Dave. Um, They've done many uh, police projects around the state and, and other areas as well. And I actually took the opportunity uh, last month I was in Mount Prospect doing some work for American Public Works Association and uh, reviewed a facility they designed for Mount Prospect, about the same size facilities we're looking at here. I was very impressed with their design. It was a well-built facility and nice materials and finishes, but also, more importantly, it was laid out well and very functional. Thank you. Tim? Um, I noticed in their proposal they have a lump sum contract. Is that what we're proposing, how we're proposing to contract with them? That's correct. Okay. And we've typically done that on a large architectural projects, lump sum. Okay. And can you just give us a brief synopsis? I saw that this uh, one of the other proposals was quite a bit less, but you didn't choose them where, where were the... Our, felt, our, our feeling was that the, their experience, FGM, specialized as a group that specializes in police station facilities. We felt that that was really the more important in this. Because it, 
it's not your typical office building. Right. There's a lot of unique spaces with police departments, you know, between, uh, you know, shooting ranges, storage of vehicles, evidence processing, evidence storage. You know, there's really a specialized line of work. And, and I agree. There's probably a lot of specialty work that you probably would have made up in change orders with <laughs> taking someone that would have been less. So you're right. better off getting what you want at the beginning. Right. Yeah, it, building, the buildings are more specialized than people realize. So, yeah. And especially given the emphasis on policing these days and trying to make it more of a community-type building, it's really, there's a lot of facets, not only within the organization, how they operate, but also how the buildings receive from the community side and how they present themselves to the public. You know, really the design of police buildings have changed dramatically in the last, well, since this one was built. Okay. Um, I, I reviewed the proposal. I thought it was very comprehensive, and I thought they did a really nice job. I'm going to kind of play devil's advocate for a second. So if this firm is has a lot of experience with the design of police stations specifically, I would think that if they've done this a few times, those estimates actually would have been down compared to other architects that may not necessarily specialize in this. I think they understand the, the difficulties in designing a facility like this, which takes a significant amount of time okay. to get it right. Any other questions? Oh, Dave, go ahead. Go ahead. I had one, Jim. Uh, Paul, um, have you met their their project manager or the you know the person that we're the city is going to be dealing with you know on? And are you comfortable? Are you comfortable with them, or is Tim Tim Metterman comfortable, or have they named that person yet? They named that person as part of their, their proposal is Andrew Mayo, and we the internal review team of the proposals actually had FGM come in and do a full presentation to the review team and we met with the project manager and I agree Dave that's always important to meet the project manager because that's really what drives the project not just the person that's the principal that shows up in the suit you know you want to see the person that's actually doing the work and so we we met with the, their entire team and I'm comfortable with them very good thank you are there going to be any special characteristics with this building that would add to the design costs not to the, well, just in terms of it's a police building, right? So it's, it's not like a standard office building where you got typical floors on, on. Sorry, I'm thinking more of um, electrical equipment, like, you know, we, we, last week we were talking about boilers, or last meeting we were talking about boilers. So heating, uh, heating cooling system, uh, does any of that need to be specialized that would increase the cost of this? There could be. It depends on this. That's the one potential on this is we have to go through sustainability analysis on the building. So, for example, if we go through the analysis and we determine that, for example, that geothermal is the way to, you know, generate the heat and the cooling for the facility, that will take some additional cost because uh, you have to hire a consultant that you determine, you know, best place best places for those those geothermal wells and you know the different aspects of that. And so that's one p potential, yes. Or if we decide to go solar, there might be some more additional design as well on that. We'll be looking at all the different. Uh, ways to heat and cool the building to find the most efficient and make and make we make recommendations. Kim? I was gonna say that it's one area that you do want to get right because that's the area that you're gonna get the most complaints from from everybody yeah. on and it is really hard to tell before you get the whole building put together. So okay. Dave? Well I, I would just say um, you know from my perspective, you know, the heating, cooling, whatever uh, reliability is is more important to me than than necessarily sustainability. You know, it is a police station, an emergency response, not like a school where they can close the school if you know the system fails. So you know, I, I would just ask us to err on the side of uh, the most reliable system that we can have for this facility. That, that's all I'll say. Thank you. Uh, I would, I would definitely agree because it is a twenty four seven facility. I do agree with you, Dave. That's important. Any other questions? And there has been a committee put together to look at this. I'm the chair of that committee, so I'll be working with Paul and the architect and have two other, another retired detective, and of course the chief will also be on that um, committee. So can't wait to get started. With the uh, committee and council discussions, is this going to be the only police building in Fitchburg or will there be several buildings to come baby steps no i think right yeah. now this is the only one that okay. we're looking at i think any additional and i had a brief just a brief conversation with the chief you know it'd probably be cheaper just to rent out an apartment or something or have satellites like in the hub 
or you know some other um, city facility outward. And then, do we know what's going to be done with the current facility? This building? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. I don't know if Paul knows. Well, this Tim's got more to add on. So I believe the intent is after we get done with the police station design and it gets ready for construction, I think they're going to relook at the space in the existing building. Some departments do need more room than currently doing. They currently have. So there will probably be some reorganization within City Hall, and some departments may move within the building and take up some of that space down there. And it might be some expansion of storage as well. And it's, it's conceivable, too, you know, if we need the basement level of this building, you know, maybe that could be used for storage for the police facility. You know, instead of putting a lot of storage in the police facility, maybe some things would be stored here, you know. You know, that's those things that we have to work through yeah, as we go through the design of the police okay. facility. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Agenda item 5C, could I get a motion to approve resolution R-72-23, approving a state municipal agreement to fund the purchase of eight bus stop shelters. I'll move approval. I'll second. Approval by Herb, seconded by Wilburn. Tim? So this is a agenda item for the agreement state agreement uh, city of Fitchburg desires to install eight uh, bus shelters the city of Fitchburg has programmed um, in the 2020 or 2023 budget and uh, we applied for and received funding from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation through the bipartisan infrastructure law um, STP urban program for bus shelters uh, so as part of this grant uh, they're funding 80 percent of the hundred and seventy six thousand dollar project cost and then the, the city would be providing funds for the remaining 20 percent any questions Dave uh, Tim can the um, there's a number of bus shelters like there's one down the street from my house that will not be used anymore due to the route locations can can those be retasked or have we have we looked at that probably you know typically trouble to move but there's just curious I, I would think depending on the condition that they're in uh, would be dependent on whether or not they could be reutilized Madison Metro hasn't mentioned any repurposing of the existing shelters in our meetings that we've had with them to date but that that's something I can bring up and, and see just curious Kim? are these shelters the new ones going to be similar in design and construction as to the existing ones the plexiglass um, you know three-sided type things yeah I mean yeah that'd be the plan I'm, I'm actually working helping Tim with the acquisition of these so the idea is to use the same ones that were used on Fitch Edgy Road and ones we also bought in 2014 as well okay is there any land acquisition needed for these now the the intent is uh, as part of the reroute um, to utilize some of those locations or existing locations out there currently so the land we would already have for it okay. and then remind me why Madison Metro doesn't buy these why we buy these I think the city has an agreement with Madison Metro well all of the city acquires from Madison is actually running the buses yeah. we're providing the landing places for the buses I mean this is not this is not included what we pay Madison that we pay them for the bus service I mean okay. that's just that's just not included in the contract with them okay so Dave I think to answer I was kind of getting at Dave's question so in repurposing the existing ones wouldn't be a Madison Metro thing that would be an us thing is that a fair statement if it's our equipment and we buy these we should be able to determine if we can repurpose anything. Yeah. Do we own and maintain? Yeah, we own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think a lot of times they use them. Um, if, if, like you said, by the time you take them off the existing ones, they use yeah. them. They put them in storage, and if you know a car crashes into one and they need something, they use them as like backup kind of things. This would be one of those things if we could avoid having inventory of bus stops. <laughs> I would think that that would be a prudent uh, spend, of, spend of money. Yeah, maybe we can put them downstairs. Oh, please. <laughs> Are we doing some of the work on this ourselves then, or what? It's possible we might use city crews to pour the pads okay. where they mount to. Yeah, that that would be the extent of it. Hearing no further questions. 
All in favor say aye. 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 The polls. Motion passes. Can I get a motion to approve resolution R-63-23, approving diesel pump dispenser replacement? Motion to approve. I'll second. Moved by Grinetsky, seconded by Lobdell. Tim. So the existing diesel pump at the public works facility uh, needs to be repaired, or well, it could be repaired, but replacement is the, the better option. The dispenser and software are also outdated. Um, and it, it's costly to repair, therefore uh, we're recommending replacement of it. So it'd be a new diesel dispenser, a card reader, and a software upgrade in the amount of $33,474. Do we know what repair would cost? Yes, I believe Mark looked into it and included that info in the agenda item. I saw the installation cost, but I didn't see the repair costs. Hey, I'm not seeing it. I can, I can get that info from Mark. If you could. So this is another one of those. It's, it's not a pretty thing. So if we have equipment that we could fix up and reuse as opposed to buying new, that's always where... Well, and I think it's also the age. It's 1992, so to repair a, you know, that would be a 31-year-old pump. Um, you know, that that's kind of the, the reason Mark went with a, a brand new one. Um, you know, the, the city definitely got its, its use out of that. Excellent. I think the software costs and the new card reader, by the time you put that on an existing facility, would it'd be much easier and more efficient to do it. Is there something wrong with the current card reader? Not the current card. It, it's outdated, um, just old, old software. So the, the pump stopped working. Like, we can't utilize the, the diesel pump right now. We're okay. going to a gas station. Okay. So, you know, for snow plowing, we had to shuffle around the uh, P cards in order to, to purchase gas because our trucks couldn't fill up at our facility. So the last couple snow events, we had to okay. uh, that, put a quick trip. That explains it. Thank you. Yep. Dave? Jim, uh, how do you, what data do you glean from the, from the cards? Uh, is, is it tied to a vehicle that, that we do any analysis on? Or you know, I'm just, I know you need the card to, the card to per, you know for to yeah. dispense the gas but i'm curious if you use use the data for anything yeah it, we do it, each vehicle has its own vehicle key um that you key into the the software and it, it keeps track of mileage um also keeps track of you know the gallons of gas that were pumped into the vehicle um so we can utilize that data you know, it's a tracking system to make sure gas isn't getting used for other other purposes. Um, that you know, when a vehicle comes in, the mileage is entered, and then the next time that vehicle comes in, the mileage is entered. You know, to to make sure that hey, the the gas that went into it is you know logical and reasoning for for the amount that they put in there, and wasn't like you utilized for a, a container that got hauled off site or something like that. So it's a, a tracking tool. Okay. Good, Dave. Uh, would we use that same fuel uh, for our, uh, say we have an emergency and have to run a generator at our, at our wells, would, the, would, that the, would we use that same uh, pump to get the fuel for that? Yes, if it's a diesel f generator, okay. uh, it would be, and then we also have regular gasoline. So there's okay. two pumps at the existing facility. Okay, I just had a, a follow up, and this was something you know I, I uh, I've talked you know I talked to Paul about and and other people is uh, uh, I just want to make sure we have a good contingency plan. You know, if we get into a, a situation where you know we're losing we lose power, um, you know, or a widespread blackout, but we still need services either to somehow get our streets cleaned or to pump our towers up, you know, um, that 
we've thought that to the next, you know, to the next level uh, that we we'd be able to keep people in their homes or keep us, you know, keep us functional through a, you know, through a severe emergency, uh, whether it be a pandemic type thing or a, you know, weather related. So uh, I'll talk to you more about that uh, off offline. Okay. I'm assuming you're going to have a special card for stuff that isn't going to be used for a vehicle then, right? Yeah, that, there'd be a separate, you wouldn't use the vehicle key for, for the generator. There'd be a, another key for the, the tool that they're utilizing. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 5E, to get a motion to approve resolution R-71-23, approving dog playground improvements in Crescent Crossing out lot 11. I'll, I'll move approval of resolution R-71-23. I'll second it. Moved by Herb, seconded by Lobdell. Jim? Uh, so the developer for Crescent Crossings has requested the city accept the uh, dog playground park amenity improvements bid for Outlot 11. Uh, three bids were received and uh, mall construction in the amount of $71,959.50 was the, the low bidder. The original bid was $121,000, but items were deleted out of the, the project in order to get it within the, the project budget of 71,000. Uh, the staff and park commission have uh, approved the dog playground amenities. Uh, it's including landscaping, there's a shade structure, dog disposal. Um, there's also obstacles for the dog, flat stones, tires, um, I think some hurdles are in there, landscaping and uh, the, the grass. And in the contract amount was $71,959. What did you cut out to get down to that $71,000? I believe some landscaping was omitted from it. Uh, landscaping, yes, to fall within the budget. Okay, thanks. Kim? Is this dog park going to be open to just residents of Crescent Crossing, or is it going to be open to others who want to use it? I believe it's a, a city dog park that all, all would be able to utilize it. Okay. Does this fit in with the county dog park system? That I do not know. Are we going to have any sort of permitting that goes with this? Permitting to utilize the dog park? Correct. Mm -hmm. For the county parks, I think they have to have a, they have to buy some kind of a permit to be able to okay. use the dog county. I, do, I don't believe the city has permits to utilize their dog park. Okay. But the dogs have to be licensed. Correct. The dog does. Right. Okay. Yes. I was thinking more of the, the permitting for the county system. Okay. What would be the city's cost on an annual basis for this park? Do we have any sort of indication of that? Or is this all going to be covered by like a homeowners association? I do not know. I could check with the park. Okay. Michael, I, I believe the, the maintenance will be a city cost. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, I believe that's the case. I think if they're going to let other people from the city use the park, that that would be the case also. Correct. So this is where this is where my head is at. I, the I was not necessarily in favor of the first dog park that we had. Um, I think it was just kind of sold as you know it was going to be something that the city offered outside of the uh, county program that's already in place as much as we tried to piggyback off of that. Does anyone remember or do you know if the, the current dog park down the street there is on the county program or is that just a city program? I, I do not know. I was going to say, I think it's a city thing. The one on Fish Hatchery, Michael, are you talking? Yeah. yeah. That's a city. It's strictly city. So are we... It seems as though we might be going from a one-off to this is going to be the norm. Is that, I guess, I'd like to hear from the council members, is that what's expected moving forward, or is this something that we're going to pick spots in? Are we going to go back and be expected to retrofit dog parks all over the place? If I recall, I think this was something that the developer had brought up. Okay. In lieu of the park fees. So, I, I mean, we did talk about the cost 
you know, the poop bags and mowing and all that other kind of stuff. But it wasn't, I didn't get the impression that this was going to be the norm that every development that goes up all of a sudden you have a little dog park there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's a function to, you know, you look at the neighborhood, there's no grass there. You know, the houses are right next to each other uh, or there's very small lots. Mm -hmm. So you end up with, with a, a smart, smart grid design or whatever. Um, you know, if people have dogs and they want, want a place to exercise them, although, you know, the county bike trail, you know, there, there's places to exercise your dog relatively close, but this is a battle I've fought and lost. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a dog owner. I'm a dog owner. I exercise my dog plenty, but this is apparently what the new, new uh, you know, um, each one though, I would add Michael, you know, each one would be evaluated on its own, on its own merits, but I, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the city spending all kinds of money on, on dog parts, parks. You know, I think we have plenty of, I think we have more people needs, but uh, so be it. And, and Tim, I, this isn't directed at you. This is maybe just more of the public works. When we see these dog parks come in, I would love to see, um, maybe a retrospective on what our current dog park situation is. So what do we budget for it? How much do we actually allocate to dog parks? If we're going to go down the route of having specialized parks for certain things, I would love to know what those costs are vis-a-vis -vis other parks that are in the neighborhood or other parks that are in the city, I should say. Um, not that that would preclude anybody from voting yes or no on that, but I think it's just more of an informational thing. Uh, same thing with solar panels or with any other public works project that we have. It's what are, based on our history, what value are we getting out of this? Uh, what were the actual costs versus the expected costs so we can make informed decisions? Sure. Any other questions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Item 6A, announcements. Oh, I have a question for Dave before he gets out. Thank Dave, are you going to be in town next week? Or, um, or the next meeting? I'll be in uh, next week, uh, here and there, <laughs> a day or here, day here or day there. Did you need something, Dave? Oh, I have that information for that nice little stormwater problem I wanted to get to you. And let's uh, you let's put let's put that. I'll I'll talk to uh, uh, Tim and Dina. We'll put that on the next agenda. The next meeting. Yes. Okay. Because after that, I'm going in for double knee surgery, so I don't know if I'll make the meeting after that. Or not. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Well, let me know when you're in town. I'll get the info to you, Dave. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, pending reassignment to the Board of Public Works. This may be my last public works meeting. So just to let everybody know that I am up for renomination. Well, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to stay. I would love to stay. Okay. Good. Someone's got to keep Dave out of trouble. <laughs> big, big job. I didn't say which Dave. <laughs> we know. We know who you're talking about. <laughs> Agenda item 6A, announcements. Next Board of Public Works meeting is Monday, April 17th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Can I get a motion for adjournment? I so move we adjourn. Second. Get a second. Okay, we have been adjourned. Have a good night. <laughs>